geht's wieder. Okay, so nahe Hager. Hier mit meinem Let's Play von Felix Fridays Attorney Spirit of Justice. Und beim letzten Mal haben wir... Ja, haben wir den letzten Speicherpunkt erreicht, in dem wir jetzt äh, uns gesagt haben, dass wir uns jetzt auf Pierce konzentrieren, weil wir der Vermutung sind, dass er die ganzen Erinnerungen von Soren manipuliert hat, indem er äh, zum Beispiel eine Seite rausgerissen hat aus dem wertvollen Notizbuch. Na? Na gut. Es wird spannend. Ah! September... 23. September, District Court Coaching Nummer 6. Blech. Das Code ist nur back inzwischen! Witness, please take the stand! Please do your name and occupation! My name is Pius Nicodi. I'm the Sprocket Family Butler. Let's get straight to the point, Mr. Nicodi. Someone tore out a page from Mr. Sprocket's notebook to manipulate his memories. And that person was you, wasn't it? That is correct. What about it? Well, that was easy. So why did you do it? Why did you tamper with Mr. Sprocket's mail-out book? Please allow me to explain. It pains me to do this, but I will tell you the truth. It pains you? That is correct. For my testimony will go against Master Soren's wishes. Soren's wishes? What is he talking about? Um, Pierce? What the hell? I rushed to the Vista deck, but the crime had already been committed. I saw Miss Allen and Gloomsbury collapsed, and Master Soren writing in his notebook. Master Soren said to me, I'll take the blame for the murder, so please take care of Allen. But I went against his order. I tore the page out of his notebook and hid the body. Wait a second! What Mr. Sprocket was writing in his notebook at the time? Could it be? It was meant to be a confession. An admission he'd killed Gloomsbury himself. He wrote that message to take the blame for Miss Wyatt? That is correct. Master Soren did hit Gloomsbury with the timekeeper to save Miss Ellen. Then Mr. Sprocket was the culprit after all! However, that blow did not kill Gloomsbury. That makes sense. Mr. Sprocket's injury wouldn't allow him to put much force into it. Enraged, Gloomsbury tried to attack Master Soren, who was already seriously wounded. But just in the nick of time, Miss Allen hit Gloomsbury from behind, and finished him off, it would seem. So the one who inflicted the fatal blow was the defendant? Yes, that is correct. But Master Soren tried to take all the clay onto himself. No way! This is pretty bad, Nick. No kidding. Pretty bad is an understatement. Well, well, Mr. Wright. It seems your decision to call for Mr. Nicoli was backfired. For the true culprit behind this case remains the defendant, Alan Wyatt. Ah! Could this get any worse? But Pierce was involved in the cover-up plot. And I bet he still has something to hide. Es muss ja. Come on, das kann's doch nicht sein. Das kann nicht der Dänder sein. Wird es auch nicht, bla. Kreuz 
Thanks for here. Why I tore out the page? So, dann wollen wir doch mal, ne? Einmal zu der richtigen Aussagehäppchen springen. Oh, take the blame, bla bla bla. Against this order, tore the page out, hit the body. Botmangriff! Mr. Nicody, could you please tell this court about that in more detail? That, you say? Which part do you mean, Mr. Wright? Could you be more specific? Oh, um, alright. What part do I want to know more about? Hmm. Vielleicht... Wie eine Seite rausreißt. Ganz einfach. Schratt! Weg! Ähm, wie hat er die Leiche versteckt? Please tell me more about the hiding of the body. Very well. After saying he would take the blame, Master Soren passed out. That's when I hit the body. I quickly took the lift down to the hold. Why I hid Gloomsbury's still warm body in the spare pegable lantern. So it was you who hit the body, not the defendant. To think Mr. Botts would move the lantern containing the body to the reception hall. Well, I did not see that coming. I don't blame you. Not even Larry can predict what Larry will do next. Maybe I should take another look at the lantern in evidence. Mr. Wood, would you like that safe and to the witness testimony? Yep. Yes, please. Yes, please. Pff, lol! Wie einfach mal das Gleiche sagen! Very well! Please send that statement to your testimony, Mr. Nicody! In the hold, I hit the still warm body in the spare pickable lantern. Danke fürs Versprechen! Mein lieber Piers! Damit hast du mir jetzt eine Möglichkeit gegeben, um was zu präsentieren. In diesem Fall die, diese schöne kaputte Lampe. Geil! Could it be? Is that what happened? If what I'm thinking is true, then maybe I can prove neither Alan nor Soren did the deed. Mr. Nicody, you said the body was still warm when you hit it, correct? So then, what if Mr. Klumsory was still alive when you went to put his body inside the lantern? What? What? That's preposterous. Actually, this shows that the victim might have still been alive while inside the lantern. Hmm. I'm afraid you have to point out which part you told me about, Mr. Wright. This part here shows that the victim might have still been alive inside the lantern. Wenn wir uns mal überlegen, hier der Griff, der ja Blut verschmiert ist. Eile der wurde ja außen rangebracht, aber eigentlich gehört er nach innen. As you can see, the back end of the lantern is a door. And there's blood here on the wheel handle. Objection. That blood stain must have gotten there when the witness put the body inside the lantern. It, in no way, shows that the victim drew his last breath while he was within the lantern. I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. For you see, in putting this lantern back together, the police inadvertently placed the inside handle on the outside, and vice versa. In other words, the wheel handles got swapped. Oh my, so they got swapped? Yes, they got swapped. Mussten wir das immer nur wiederholen? What? But that's ridiculous. Not at all. If you compare the other male pickable lantern in the reception hall.
It's quite obvious the wheel handles were attached backwards. The detective in charge of the restoration will see me in my office later. Sorry, Emma, and good luck. In that case, what does the blood stain on the wheel handle mean? The blood stain didn't get there by chance. When the victim was put inside the lantern, he was only unconscious, not dead. When he regained consciousness, he probably tried to get out of the lantern. So he grabs the inner wheel handle and that's when the blood got on it. This proves that the victim was still alive when he was inside the lantern! At the time, I was completely convinced Gloomsbury was dead. I had I checked more carefully, he might have survived. Unfortunately, to be sure but not significant enough to change this trial's outcome. Again, I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. It actually has a very significant impact on this case. The victim was struck by the defendant, then died from his injuries sometime later. There's nothing more to it. Schnauzer! That's why you're wrong! Let's take another look at Mr. Gloomsbury's autopsy report, shall we? Please focus on the description of his injuries. It says, one concussion was found on the back of the head and one on the side. Yes, the one Mr. Sprocket gave him and the one Miss Wyatt delivered to finish him off. Now, the defense would like to submit a different interpretation. A different interpretation! The victim was knocked unconscious by the first blow and was then put into the lantern. So, so what about the lethal blow by the defendant that the witness talked about? Yes, well, that didn't happen. After some time, when the victim regained consciousness and tried to get out of the lantern, that's when he received the second blow that finished him off. Taking into account the fact that the victim was alive for a period after the first hit, and that he didn't re did receive a second blow to the head, it does seem entirely possible. Yes, as long as the first blow didn't kill the victim instantly, then there's a possibility that... Someone other than Mr. Sprocket or Miss White delivered the fatal blow! Objection. Hm, that's all you've got. Even if there was a time lag between the two blows. The prosecution's position doesn't change. What? What do you mean? It's elementary, Mr. Wright. After the reception, when the defendant was cleaning up the reception hall, the victim, who was supposed to be dead, suddenly came out of the lantern. The defendant grabbed the murder weapon, which was right there, and finished him off. Hmm, the theory sounds awfully familiar! Of course it does, Your Honor, because it's exactly what I proposed at the very start. The second blow was inflicted by the defendant after all. Oh, I see! It seems a tangle of mysteries has unraveled into a single thread! Objection! Nine? But as long as there is a possibility that the fatal blow was delivered by a third person, then we must continue the deliberations! Give it up, Mr. Wright. Unless you have something to prove the presence of your precious third person. I... um... Okay, Nick, just relax. You can do this. Come on now, take some deep breaths. Good idea. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. There, don't you feel better already? Maya's right. I should calm down, get my focus back and go over everything again. And then, hopefully, I'll be able to find something to prove there was a third person. Let's see. First... 
Why did Gloomsbury attack Ellen? Because he was tired of taking the blame for the accident? Hmm. But something about that line of reasoning just doesn't feel quite right to me. No? How come? Well, if it is just a personal vendetta, he had already stabbed Soren. So why then? Was he so determined to go after Ellen? Yeah, right. This whole thing feels too premeditated for a crime of passion. But Gloomsbury didn't seem to have a personal grudge against Ellen. If Gloomsbury didn't have a personal reason to attack Ellen, then... You've taken long enough, Mr. Wright. Now it's time for your okay, some actions. What proof do you have that the third person was involved? Alright, I'll show you. I'm not completely sure of what I'm doing yet, but it still like looks like I'm out of time. This piece of evidence proves the involvement of a third person. Und das wäre... Was wäre hier, wenn diese Notiz ein, kein Reminder an sich selbst ist, sondern äh, ein Auftrag? I get it now. Now I see why this note bothered me so much when I first saw it. It looks like a note outlining a murder plot. That note was apparently written by the victim. But why would he feel the need to write instructions to himself like this? Your Honor, please take a look at this note. This is the victim's murder plan, right? It's definitely a murder plan. But what if Mr. Gloomsbury didn't write this note himself? What? This is how you intend to conjure up your mysterious third party, Mr. Wright? Can you even prove that that note wasn't written by the victim? Yes! Yes, I can! Very well then! Please present your evidence, Mr. Wright! This evidence proves the victim didn't write the note. In diesem Fall, um, ausschlaggebend is... Unser, unser Lieblingskerzenständer. This is the weapon Mr. Gloomsbury used to stab Mr. Sprocket. I was wondering what you'd pull out this time. Dare I ask what that could possibly have to do with the note? Mr. Gloomsbury's prints were found on this candelabra. And the prints were from his left hand. So, that makes the victim left-handed, correct? Exactly, your honor. The police looked into it, too, and confirmed as much. Now, take a look at the smudged writing in this note. Notice how the smudging only starts from the middle of each preceding line? Had this been written by a lefty, then writing would be smudged from the far left end. This means that whoever wrote this note was definitely right-handed. In other words, somebody other than the victim wrote this note. What? Hmm. But if somebody other than Mr. Gloomsbury wrote it, then what does this note mean? Mr. Gloomsbury followed this note to the letter when he attacked Miss Wyatt. So clearly, this note isn't a murder plan written by Mr. Gloomsbury, but rather... These are instructions to kill Miss Wyatt, used by somebody else! Objection. If it wasn't the victim who wrote these so-called instructions, then who wrote it? Most of the people involved are right-handed, you know? He is correct. The majority of the family and their employees who were on the airship are indeed right-handed. I must say, that is a very rough and slip short conjecture you've proposed. Ugh! I admit I haven't figured out who wrote it just yet. 
Leave it to Mr. Edwards to go for the juggler. This culprit who ordered Gloomsbury to attack Alan. What could their motive have been? It doesn't seem very likely Alan did anything to incur anybody's wrath, right? Right. Not too likely, anyway. In that case, it has to be about Soren. If somebody were to hold a grudge against Soren, what would it be about? That accident, I guess. I couldn't understand if Bloomsbury felt resentful about having to take the blame. But the one who lost the most to that accident was Soren's sister. She lost her life after all. Soren suffered too, of course. He was crushed by losing somebody so precious to him. Somebody precious, huh? Soren's sister. Wait! There's one more person! There's someone else who must go hold a grudge against Soren! Did you figure something out? I think so. I think this somebody else used Gloomsbury to try and get revenge against Soren. Did you so say somebody tried to get revenge against Mr. Spock and Mr. Wright? The person who manipulated and used Mr. Gloomsbury was... Es gab ja noch jemanden, der unter diesem Verlust am meisten gelitten hat und es wäre natürlich klar, wie er sich dann rächen würde. Töte die, Bef töte die Verlobte des, äh, desjenigen. Äh, töte die Verlobte der Verlobten, um Rache daraus zu üben, dass, dass er deine Verlobte weggenommen hat. Es war Selenas Verlobte. The person who used Mr. Gloomsbury to try and get revenge on Mr. Sprocket. And they finished Mr. Gloomsbury off to silence him. Was a man dear to Mr. Sprocket's older sister. Selina Sprocket's fiance. Not that I'm not positive, but it's certainly possible. This fiance could have made Gloomsbury attack Alan to get his revenge on Soren. What? Her fiance? Order in the court! Order in the seats! Das gibt's den Thronbombos! Yes, it does seem quite believable that Miss Selina Sprocket's fiance would be a grudge against Mr. Sprocket for his role in the accident! Exactly, Your Honor. Maybe her fiancé was trying to murder Miss Wyatt in order to make Mr. Sprocket experience the same pain he'd felt. Miss, Miss Sprocket's fiancé was a surgeon if memory serves. But the only per people who attended the reception were family and staff members. That may be, but that, that just man means that Mr. Sprocket... Ich, ich kann nicht mehr lesen. But then that just means that Miss Sprocket's fiancé must have been among those who attended. What? Really? Of course. Otherwise, how could you have killed Gloomsbury? Oh, I see what you're doing. This is just another giant bluff, isn't it? All right, I'll bite. Who exactly do you claim this fiancé to be? Yes, I would like to know as well! Are you sure you're gonna be okay, Nick? M maybe? When it comes to suspicious people, there's only one person on my list. I need to find something that connects him to Selena. This will help us identify Miss Brockett's fiancé. Und was das genau für, für eine Sache ist? Morgen! Egal ob positiv oder negativ, Wertung mal gern gesehen. Blech, ich kann nicht mehr sprechen. Das war's von meiner Satz. Wir sehen uns das nächste Mal wieder. Sehr geistig kann ich mehr sprechen.